All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I want to uh, go over this uh, Bible verse. If I can find it here, Second Timothy three verse seven. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. So let's go and listen to these two ladies right here. Mm -hmm. If you go back 20, 30 years, 40 years, there's, there's things that we know now that the leadership in the church uh, probably didn't know in their day, certain revelations. Uh, and maybe because we have more ways of uh, learning things, uh, specifically the computer, we have greater uh, ways of accessing certain commentaries and things. So, uh, and I think as time goes on, that's the way it is. The next generation should have more, have gained more knowledge. Mm -hmm. more. Mm, no, no, that's wrong. Okay, um, they, they might have more information. But that information does not lead to knowledge. And uh, so I'll get into that in a second. A more understanding sometimes of the Bible. And it even shows up in this historicist view. Uh -huh. You want to get into it right now or you want to wait? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can get into it right now. But you know how the scripture yeah. says that, um, <clears throat> you know, that they will be ever learning. Ever learn. And never able. Never. Never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. You do that. And That's even it. our uh, researchers are saying now, those are the researching church, and they're saying that this is probably the most atheistic generation. Yes. Uh, the most agnostic generation uh, yes. yet. Um, and so, you know, worse. people are... You would think that you have access, but I think what you have access to is more information. I don't know how correct it is, and I don't know how people accept it or, you know, um, follow it, whether they're following what seems to be comfortable to them, you know? And you certainly have to filter it out. You are absolutely... Yeah, filter it out. So, no, that filtering it out, that has nothing to do with anything at all. All right, so let's get into this. Now, the lady is saying, "Well, we got manuscripts now. The the Catholic Church, the the people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, they've found documents, and uh, now we know things that we didn't know in the past. And uh, you know, we got people on the moon and, and the stars, you know, flying around space, and we we got access and uh, information that um, they didn't, you know, the the knuckle draggers caveman they didn't have this stuff a thousand two thousand years ago oh that's um, very naive and a very ignorant and I'm gonna show you exactly um, the secret to wisdom all right so I think I misspoke a little bit ago I said um, you know they have uh, knowledge today no question about it just like they've had knowledge in the past but without the knowledge of the truth you know <laughs> what's it matter really seriously what's it matter and so let's go to Daniel real quick what in the world is this uh, oh, I misspelled that so bad, I almost broke the internet. Alright, so we'll go back here. Is that even close here? Alright. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased, but... Go to Second Timothy 3 ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Alright, so 
there's a difference, right? We've got to rightly divide the word of truth. So the knowledge of the truth is different than the knowledge of the world. No question about it. All right, so I, you know, I pointed out this uh, verse many times that even today when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. All right, and we see um, many times in the old, oops. Yeah, well, no, I've got to narrow this down, don't we? Many times in the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, we have this prophecy uh, regarding this idea of make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. And then of course uh, echoing that from Isaiah in Matthew 13 for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them alright so we um, we get many examples of this uh, John 12 he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them and again also in Acts 28 all right so uh, again when you uh, what's that let me go back to that uh, right about here second Corinthians 3 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart and why is that because they don't have faith but when they should turn to the Lord meaning when they shall have faith then I shall heal them right so it's interesting how powerful faith is right so if we if we were to go to Hebrews 11 we would see here exactly how important and how powerful faith is it's incredible so when we read <clears throat> when we read on this you know second Corinthians where it, it says when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. The key is faith. So when you have faith, your eyes are open. And your ears can hear. And you can see and, and understand. But without faith, you can't see. You can't hear and you can't understand. It's a phenomenon, really, but it's absolutely true. So, you think about, <clears throat> um, you know, the importance of faith. Now, what are you putting your faith in? Are you putting your faith in men? Well, that's trouble, my friend. That's trouble, okay? Because when you put your faith in men, you're not putting your faith in God and here in Isaiah 66 I will choose their delusions because they don't trust the Word of God right. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which <clears throat> I delighted not all right, so if you don't have faith in God, you're going to have delusions. You're going to believe things that are not true. All right, so think about this. You've got the Bible that you hold in your hands, and this is the Word of God. 
but you don't trust the Bible you hold in your hands. Instead, you're relying on men to tell you translations of the scripture in another language. Right, that's parallel to what we read in Genesis chapter 3 when the serpent says to Eve, Yea, has God said? See, you're not putting your trust in the Bible you hold in your hands. You're putting your trust in the serpent who is correcting what you think, what you might think is correcting the Word of God and questioning the Word of God and getting you to doubt the Word of God which is the Bible that you hold in your hands and because you lack faith you're gonna lack understanding and wisdom it's that simple so the key to understanding is faith All right? it doesn't matter how many manuscripts there are out there now you think about this ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. <clears throat> you hear about people, um, they, they spend all this time reading extra biblical books. They spend all this time listening to preachers and what they have to say. You, they spend all this time learning all these different things, yet they never come to the knowledge of the truth. Why is that? Because they lack faith. They lack faith in the Word of God. They don't trust. And this is worse than any time in the history of the world. And it's no surprise at all when Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing Jesus says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And of course, oops. And I'll end it on this. Oops, maybe. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And of course, Second Timothy three. Oh, we are right here, weren't we? Remember this: ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived and how is that possible it's possible because people don't have faith and, and isn't it pretty amazing really that you know the antichrist is here but because people don't have faith in the word of god they're not able to see Who he is. It's incredible the world that we're living in today.